Hi everyone, Hamish here for the Uplay team at Massive, and this month here on Angon, we're going to be focusing on all things streaming. We've seen all the comments that you've been writing on our streaming videos, and we thought that it would be a good idea to put together something a little bit more robust aimed at beginners for those looking to dip their toes in the streaming waters. So today we're going to answer the simple question, how do I stream on my PC? And by the end of this video, you should have all the information you need to get your stream up and running today. All right, so let's keep it really simple. All you're going to need to stream is a PC and an internet connection. Of course, both of these things and the quality of them is gonna really determine the end result of your stream. But if you have both of those boxes checked, we're confident that we can help you get your stream up and running. What you end up producing for your stream will need to be sent to the servers of the streaming platform of your choice. So the first thing we're going to do is head over to speedtest.net and check our upload speed. It's worth mentioning that the download and upload speeds we're getting here in Sweden are absolutely awesome, but your mileage may vary. It's really common, depending on where you are in the world or your internet plan, that you'll see upload speeds of two, three, five or 10 megabits per second. Also megabits and megabytes are actually two different units. It's not really something you need to know for what we're doing today, but it's always handy to have that in your back pocket. Anyway, run this speed test a few times to make sure you're getting consistent numbers, write it down and keep it for later. Okay, so the next two boxes we're going to tick are making sure you have your stream key and the software that you'll need to encode and output your stream. In our case, like most people out there, we'll be using OBS. Firstly, let's head over to the account on the streaming platform you are using, look in the settings and find our stream key. It's actually gonna look like a super long password and you really don't wanna show this to anyone because if they have that information, they'll be able to stream to your channel and we definitely don't want that. All right, now that we've copied our stream key, one of the things that I really like to do just so I have it always on hand is save my stream key to a text file or something somewhere on my computer. But regardless, you'll always be able to find it in the account settings of the streaming platform you're using. All right, time for the software. Now let's head over to obsproject.com. We're going to download the installer we need, which in our case is Windows, and it's also completely free, which is always great. Then once we've got that installation done, we can start getting OBS set up. So OBS can get pretty complicated at times, and if this is your first time using the software, don't worry, because all we're gonna to do today is go over the need to know information to get your stream up and running. The first time you open OBS after installing, you'll actually get prompted to use the auto configuration wizard, but you can always find it later by going to the tools menu. In some cases, this will be all you need to do to get your stream going. But if you wanna have a bit more control over the variables that will affect the quality of your stream, we're gonna go into those and tell you which ones you can tweak. Okay, if you're ready to follow along, here's what we're going to do. We're gonna learn how to put in our stream key. We'll choose our bitrate and resolution. We'll also decide if we want to use the CPU or GPU to encode our stream. We'll adjust some of the encoding settings. We're going to pick our audio devices and have OBS recognize our microphone. And we'll start adding some things for OBS to display. Okay, so if you haven't put in your stream key yet, let's head into the settings menu, navigate over to the stream tab, select our streaming service. In our case, that's going to be Twitch. And we'll use our stream key here in this field. We'll also leave the server set to auto to keep things really simple, which in most cases works absolutely perfectly. The next thing we'll do is actually dig up the number that we recorded earlier during our speed test. And for the sake of explanation, we're going to assume that our upload speed was actually five megabits per second. Speed test actually gave us a number that was measured in megabits per second. But when we head over to the output tab and look at the advanced stream settings, the value that this field requires is actually in kilobits per second. So if we were looking to stream at four megabits per second, we would need to put 4,000 as the value here. Math is fun. The reason I've chosen around 4,000 for the value here is because it's always a good idea to give yourself some overhead compared to your actual upload speed. As a rule of thumb, around 20 to 25% lower than your upload speed for your bitrate will work great. Personally, I like thinking about bitrate kind of like the amount of spread that you would put on a piece of toast. I don't have any toast with me, so we're gonna use a post-it for this demonstration. Now, if you don't use enough spread or bitrate for your output resolution, that being the physical size of our toast in this example, then your end result is gonna be a bit ugly and not very tasty. So we want to make sure that we're using enough bitrate to get the quality we want at the size we're aiming for. So let's go a bit into resolution or the size of the toast we want. Keep in mind that 1080p when compared to 720p is actually needing to display more than double the amount of pixels. Just fold that one in half really quickly. So by now you've probably guessed that trying to spread the same amount of bitrate over these two different physical sizes is gonna give you very different quality results. That's why streaming at 1080p may not be the best idea for you if you don't have the bitrate to support it. 
For now, let's head over to the video tab and change the scaled resolution to 1280 by 720. The base resolution that you see here should be set to the same as the monitor that you're gaming on. Let's go ahead and set the FPS to 30 here so we have a good starting point. Now that we've told OBS what we want it to do, we need to tell it how we want it to achieve this task. And that's going to be selecting either CPU or GPU encoding. So let's head back to the output tab and look in the advanced streaming settings. To encode on our CPU, we'll be using the X264 encoder. We'll set the rate control to CBR, which stands for constant bit rate. And it's always a good idea to start with very fast as your CPU usage preset. This is where the power of your CPU comes into play, since the CPU usage preset can basically be described as a quality setting. The faster the setting, the easier it is on your CPU, but it also means lower quality. If you want to increase the quality, you'll be aiming for presets on the other end of the scale, but these have become extremely hard for your CPU to deal with. You'll probably want to revisit the CPU usage preset once we get into testing, so don't forget where it is. Generally, if you have a PC that can handle it, X264 is going to give you better quality, but depending on your PC, you may want to investigate GPU encoding as a different solution. For those of you out there with an NVIDIA RTX card, encoding the stream on your GPU is a very attractive proposition, since there were drastic improvements in a collaboration between OBS and NVIDIA with the NVENC new encoding option. With this, you can expect about the same quality as X264 encoding at around the fast or medium CPU usage preset with much less of a performance impact. So that's pretty cool. Once you've dialed in the bitrate you're aiming to stream at, you can leave everything else at default here and we can come back and revisit the preset once we get into the testing phase. Basically, if you have the option to use the new NVIDIA encoder, I definitely recommend trying it out. With all of these variables, this is definitely the most complicated part, and it may take some playing around with, but it's worth remembering the following as you tweak these variables to achieve the perfect balance. The encoder will determine if you want to use your CPU or GPU to create the image that's displayed on your stream. The resolution defines the amount of pixels in the final image on your stream. The bitrate is the amount of information used or uploaded to create the final image on the stream. And the CPU usage preset determines how much work you are asking your CPU to do to create that image. Now, if you're a little bit lost with what settings to change and what to set them to, Twitch has an awesome list of recommended settings that you can try over on their website. You'll find a link to that below. Now, if you aren't shy, you'll also want to make sure your microphone is set up so your stream can hear you. Let's head over to the audio tab and set our mic auxiliary audio device to the microphone of our choosing. Next, you'll want to be adding gameplay sources and webcams to your scenes, which you can do with display capture and video capture devices and so forth. We'll be going in depth on all of this in an upcoming video, so make sure to come back for that one. Before you go live though, you'll wanna make sure that everything is actually working and that our PC isn't going to freak out when we hit that streaming button. I like to do local recordings for these types of tests. So let's head over to our output tab, head over to recording and make sure that we're using our stream encoder to record the stream. While you're here, set the recording format to MP4, since it's generally more compatible and easier to use than FLV, especially if in the future you want to edit down your recorded footage. To find your files, you'll also see the folder that the recording will go into in the recording path field. Now let's do a test by booting up one of the games we intend to stream, so we can get an idea of where we're landing with the end result that we're aiming for. There's really no point in encoding a stream of a still desktop. When we're testing, and if you do have two monitors, it's a good idea to have a look at that CPU percentage usage in the bottom right corner of OBS. That'll help give you an idea of what you can start pushing it towards before you start reaching encoding issues. Then you'll want to watch your recording back. Does it look good to you? Are there any random freezes or FPS drops? If it looks good, awesome. You're good to go. If it doesn't, then we'll need to use our newfound knowledge of bitrate, resolution, CPU usage preset, and everything we've talked about before to adjust those things and get a better result. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm usually at this point still a little bit nervous about what we've set up being actually good once we put it out there on the stream. To be safe, there's nothing like setting up the real thing. So I like to have a dummy account in my back pocket that I can stream to and have other people check out on their phone or on their PC so we can see what the actual end result's gonna be. Don't forget that if you are intending to stream to a different account, you'll need to input that stream key into OBS. The last thing you wanna do is set up your test stream and go live to your actual account and all your viewers showing up a little bit confused. I've done that before. All right, now that you've done all of these tests and you're finally comfortable with how everything looks and works, congratulations, you're good to go. Hopefully this very basic tutorial has given you all the information you need to know to get your stream out there to the masses. And remember, 
to stream, all you really need is a PC and an internet connection. Of course, there are a plethora of upgrades that you can do to your setup when you're good and ready. You might want a second monitor so you can read chat and check out OBS while you're streaming. There are also stream decks so you can change your scenes in OBS at a press of a button. Or maybe you want a nice fancy XLR microphone and audio interface to really up that audio quality. Or if you want, and admittedly it's overkill, you can upgrade your webcam to a professional DSLR. And beyond that, you can get better lighting, you can dress up your background, all of that. It's really up to you. And as I mentioned before, if you are interested in more streaming stuff, this month here on Angon, we are focusing on all of it. So next week, join us again if you want to find out how to set up a dual PC stream. It's gonna get pretty technical. All right, see you soon. Bye.